Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to leverage the modern tab list control to create a navigation menu experience in Power Apps and also create a flyout menu experiences that we can leverage in the context of galleries and more. The modern tab list control comes inbuilt with some cool features that we can take advantage of to build both of these experiences in a matter of minutes. So let's check it out in action. I have a power app that showcases how we can leverage the tab list control. One of the options is to leverage it as a navigation for our power app. Currently, I am on the home screen. If I click on email, it will navigate to the email screen. If I click on home, this takes me back to the home screen. I can also add logic in the tab list control to launch a URL directly from Power Apps. If I click HR, this will launch the HR SharePoint site. And I also have the ability to log out from my Power App. Another use case for the tab list control is to show more options for gallery items. Real estate in Power Apps is key. The gallery here shows data from a SharePoint list. And if I select the three ellipses, it opens this flyout menu that shows additional options. I would like to view this item so it navigates me to the display form. I can go back, select any item. Once again, the more options fly out is active. If I click edit, it takes me to the edit form experience for that item. I can delete the item or I can click on email that navigates me to an email screen that has context about the selected item plugged in to the subject and body of the email being framed. So let's try and build this experience from scratch. For the demo, I'll take a simple sales discount requests SharePoint list. In Power Apps, I will start with an app template. I'll pick SharePoint, pick my SharePoint site, pick my SharePoint list, and click Create App. And this will begin the process of creating a simple three screen. Canvas Power App connected to the SharePoint list. The home screen is a browse screen that showcases the items on the SharePoint list. There is a detail screen that shows the details of the item selected in the gallery. And then we have an edit screen that allows us to edit the item selected in the gallery. And to quickly create an email screen, I will leverage one of the existing screen templates. We have one for email. And that builds out my email screen. Now to leverage the modern tab list control to create a navigation experience in my Power App, I will head over to settings, go to upcoming features, and enable try out the modern controls. If I click on the plus icon, now I have the modern controls as an option to select. One of the options here is tab list. I'll select this. So that adds the tab list control onto my screen. I'll just move some items around. So the tab list control, which will act like my navigation control sits right here on the top. The tab list control has an items property. This is where I need to plug in my navigation options. And since I would be reusing this control on multiple screens, I would like to configure the navigation for all my screens in one go when the app starts. So the app object 
has a function called on start. That's the first function that gets called when the app starts. So here, clear collect, call tab data. That's the name of my collection. And I would like to create an array of items. I'll create a record. Name will be the name of the navigation item. I'll call it home. In my navigation menu, I would like to have options to navigate to screens, open links, or log out the user from the Power App. So I'll add a property called action. The home record, I'll put its action as navigate. I'll add a property screen. Here, I'll give it the actual context of the screen that I would like to navigate to. My home screen is browse screen one. So I will pick browse screen one. And in scenarios where I would like to launch a URL, I will add a property URL. This specific item will perform navigation. That's my action. So I do not need any value for URL. So I will simply leave it as an empty string. I'll close the record, close the array for now, and close the clear collect function. Click format text. Now I'll add my second navigation item. I will copy the record, put a comma, and paste. This one, I will call it email, navigate to my email screen, action, navigate, screen, in my case, is screen one, URL, I will leave it empty. For the next one, the name will be HR. I would like to launch the URL for the HR site collection. So action, I will call it link, screen, I will set this as blank and URL will be the URL to my HR site. This could be any URL that you want to launch. And then my last option will be to log out the user from the app. Action, I will call it log out. No screen context needed in this case and no URL needed in this case. The names of the navigation items, I can also add emojis here. So home or email and so and so forth. Now this collection will be the first action that will be taken when a user runs this Power App. However, since I am in the edit experience of the Power App, I will need to run this manually. So I can right click on the app object and run the on start function. If I go to variables and look at the collection, here is my call tab data. We can see that it has been loaded with four rows. Now for the tab list control on my home screen, I will select call tab data. The tab list control has a property called fields. I will go to edit go to add field and pick the name property that I created in the records that I added to the collection. I will click add. If I preview the app, we can see the tab list experience is built out based on the data from our collection. If you need a vertical navigation experience, you can simply change the alignment to vertical in that case, I'll need more height. So we have a vertical navigation experience or we can have a horizontal navigation experience. The tab list control has a property called on select. So here I will use the switch function, switch self, meaning the control itself dot selected dot my property called action. Now, if the value is navigate, I will use the navigate function 
to take the user to self dot selected dot screen if the action is link i will use the launch function to launch self dot selected dot url if it is logout i will simply exit the user from the app so i'm leveraging that action property that i created in my collection to decide what specific actions i need to take for the default selected items property of the tab list control i need to default the selection to the current screen the user is on so the tab can highlight the item i will use the function lookup look up my collection where i have the property called screen is equal to app dot active screen and that completes my tab list control setup now if i need to replicate this on any other screen i simply copy go to that screen paste the tab list control let's preview the app i am on the email screen so the email tab is highlighted i will navigate to the home screen back to the email screen let's launch the hr site and right now i'm editing the app so even if i click log out it won't log me out but if i was to run this app and click log out it will log the user out now in my gallery i have a lot of real estate to play with so i'll change the wrap count to 2 to show two items in one row in the gallery i would like to create that fly out menu kind of an experience that entire experience i can easily create by using the tab list control again when the tab list control does not have any real estate to show the items within it it represents three ellipses and if you select it it will open up those options so why not leverage this technique to create a fly out menu experience for an item that the user selects in the gallery so i'll select the gallery click edit gallery go to add and insert a tab list for the items property i'll simply create an array of values one option is view that will take the user to the detail screen to view the item edit that will take the user to the edit screen to edit the item delete the item send an email if i preview the app notice the tab list is within the gallery template so each item has those options next for the on select property of the tab list i will use the switch function switch on self dot selected dot value if the value is view i will navigate the user to my details screen if the value is edit i will navigate the user to my edit screen if the value is delete i will add the function to remove from my connected sharepoint list which is sales discount requests that's the list connected in the power app remove this item that's the current item context in the gallery and my last option is email i will navigate the user to my email screen once again i'm taking different actions depending upon which value is selected contoso i will select click view 
it shows me all the details of that item rd tech i will select go to edit this will allow me to edit the item the discount offered for rd tech is 15 let's change this to 20 and submit this has updated the item in the sharepoint list and we can see the changes reflected right here this specific item i will delete this item has been removed from my data source and then if i select and go to email this will take me to the email screen and here if i would like to set some default values for the subject text input control i will use browse gallery one dot selected dot title if i go back to home and pick rd tech and go to email we can see how the default value has changed if you enjoyed this video then do like comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and thank you so much for watching